see the light. Tell me, tell me. There it is. Yay, we are live. Thank you, John. John and Pat have to tell me when we're live because for some reason the host doesn't get to see the light right away, but everybody else does. So good morning, everybody. Here we are, our Facebook Live. I've got my phone here in front of me so I can find us. Let me um, get that situated here. Okay, it's telling me Brentwood Inspired Living Center has gone live. So, <laughs> so where are we? There we are. Yay, good morning, Jenny. Okay, whoops, what did I do with it? Okay, there we go. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to Brentwood Inspired Living Center Sunday morning Facebook Live. Our exciting Sunday morning. We're gonna just give it a few minutes to let everybody see the notification and log on with us. We are so happy that you are here this morning. Yay, Don. Don says, I'm here with bells on but not hair combed, that's okay. <laughs> we forgive you for not having hair. He gets hair. away with that. Yeah, you get away with that on Zoom. Good morning, Beverly. Yay, good morning, Jan, you're here. That was quick, that was quick. Okay, everyone's logging on, yay. My name is Amy Van Ling and I am the spiritual director here at Brentwood Inspired Living Center. How are all of you this morning, bright beings of love? Beverly said, yay, I found you. Love this format. Yes, I know, it's so fun. Good morning, Nancy. Yay, hello. All the numbers are climbing up. I like to see it. it's fast, you know, as soon as the notification goes out that we're live, then everybody gets notified and jumps on and here we are together. And I am here this morning with the wonderful Pat McCulley, who will be sharing our inspirational reading and our prosperity message. And our incredibly talented musician, John Shin, is here to share songs with us this morning. We love you and appreciate you both for your um, willingness to Zoom, to Zoom with us. Good morning, Maria and David and Tracy and Stephen. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. I'm so glad you're here. I appreciate your willingness to participate in this collective creation we have going on here. Uh, <laughs> immense fun, and we're doing it together, and that's the best part. So um, today, I am bringing your Sunday morning message. Last week when we were logging off, Michael said something about it, and I thought, what, what did he mean? Oh, that's right. I <laughs> next week so here i am it's me i'm so grateful grateful to be with all of you this morning we'll just wait a couple more minutes before starting to let everybody have the opportunity to hop on with us um how is everybody holding space in the world these days i i heard something a while back and i really love the analogy it was about um something about a train when a train goes through a tunnel and it gets dark you don't just throw away the ticket and jump off. You just sit tight and you trust the engineer. And I was like, I love that. <laughs> I love that image for, you know, going through stuff, going through life. So yay, good morning, good morning, Dave. I'm glad you have internet or Wi-Fi, whatever uh, gets you here, I'm grateful. I know he was having trouble last week. Good morning, Ronnie. I'm so glad everybody is here. So yeah. So we're not throwing out the ticket, we're trusting the divine plan. <laughs> Thank you everybody for joining us. You're just logging on. I've got my phone in front of me. That's why I'm looking down because that's where I see all of you uh, joining us. I'm excited to see you logging in. I have Pat and John here on the uh, screen in front of me on Zoom and then we're taking our Zoom call to Facebook Live. And this is how our cool technology works these days. So if you or anybody you know would like affirming prayer, our prayer team is ready. Just send in your prayer request to us. You can um, find our email on our uh, website, brentwoodilc.org. We are currently donating to the Interfaith Peace Project. That's with Father Tom. You can find out more about that on our giving back page. Okay, so. We've got everyone logging on. Good morning, magnificent beings. Yay, yay, I'm so glad you're here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. And I'm gonna start, uh, good morning, Gloria. I'm gonna get started with our mission statement. And um, our mission statement was a collaborative creation of our board members 
and there was 12 of us at the time. I think it was 2017 and we had a weekend retreat at San Damiano and it developed during this most beautiful collaboration and discussion. And um, so I love it and I hope you enjoy it with me. We are an open heart centered spiritual community honoring the one presence within us. We welcome all to connect, grow and expand in wisdom, compassion and love. So I'm gonna go ahead and hand the screen over to Pat for our inspirational reading this morning. Thank you, Pat. Ah, unmuted. The inspirational reading this morning is called Be Happy Every Single Day. And it's by Madison Taylor from the dailyohm.com. Discover something daily that makes you happy and become witness to your life transforming. Our lives are rich with potential sources of happiness, but sometimes we become victims of negative thinking because we believe that focusing on all that has gone wrong will provide us with the motivation we need to face the challenges of survival. When we focus on what makes us happy, however, a shift occurs in the fabric of our existence. Finding something to be happy about every single day can help this shift take place. The vantage points from which we view the world are brought into balance and we can see that being alive truly is a gift to be savored. There's always something we can be happy about. It is simply up to us to identify it. On one day, we might find happiness in a momentous life-changing event, such as a marriage or a birth of a child. On another day, the happiness we experience may be a product of our appreciation of a particularly well-brewed cup of tea or the way the sun shines on a leaf. If we discover that we literally cannot call to mind a single joyful element of existence, we should examine the cause of the blockage standing between us and experiencing happiness. Keeping a happiness journal is a wonderful way to catalog the happiness unfolding all around us so that joy has a myriad opportunities to manifest itself in our lives. Writing about the emotions we experience while contemplating joy may give us insight into the factors compelling us to resist it. Happiness may not always come easily into your life. You have likely been, been conditioned to believe that the proper response to unmet expectations is one of sadness, anger, guilt, or fear. To make joy a fixture in your existence, you must first accept that it is within your power to choose happiness over unhappiness every single day. Then each time you discover some new source of happiness, the notion that the world is a happy place will find its way more deeply into your heart. On this day, find one thing to be happy about and let it fill your heart. Thank you, Pat. I love that reminder. One thing, we can find one thing for sure. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna hand it over to our amazing John Shin with our first song today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Amy. I am so happy to be with you today. Irrespective of the idiosyncrasies of Zoom that don't allow me to get my audio through to you the way I like, so I ask you to feel the energy of this song. They say there is a sacred chord When played returns alive once more And brings 
Songs that sacred music flowing through you. It goes like this: the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, a major lift, a simple song, a praise called Hallelujah, 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 your faith was strong, but you needed proof. You called on God and he told you truth that you and he are one and she lives through you. So now there's no one outside to blame when all your life goes down in flames. You have to go within for hallelujah. 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 You may say I took the name in vain To say that I and God are same But do I really need to prove it to you? The flame of truth is in every word It doesn't matter what you heard Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I sang my song, perhaps not much. We've all come here to feel a touch. I told my truth, I didn't come to fool you. So even when it all feels wrong, I'll stand before you, sing the song, praises for the ways of hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. John. Lots of comments about uh, your lyrics. I said you are the master of creating your version. Yes, thank you, John. He is amazing with the lyrics. Thank you so much, John. We appreciate it. They flow you. through. Thank you. I love that. Love being a channel for them. Appreciate you. Okay, Pat, I'm going to hand it over. This is our virtual prosperity time, and I invite everyone to just breathe into this moment with wide open hearts. Thank you, Pat. This is our time to join together in celebration of our abundance, knowing that we are prosperous in all ways. Let us now open our hearts to the practice of giving. And even though we are not gathering in person, we remember that our community continues to thrive because of your awesome generosity. We know that we are all continuing to be blessed by staying connected every day 
with our favorite small groups on Zoom or our connection group on our Facebook page. We believe and abide by the law of circulation, knowing that as we give, we shall receive. Even though we are not physically present, we are still paying our rent, electricity, insurance, and keeping our center secure in preparation for our return. Even though we are not physically present, we are coming together now to contribute to keeping our center abundantly alive. We are so very grateful to be part of our center and feel the blessings of being together and how our connection enriches our lives. We are excited to give to a resource that enlivens our souls. We give thanks for the ever increasing constant flow of absolute good in our lives now. And we know that truth as we stay in the flow. I want to remind you now of three ways to contribute monthly or one-time donations to our center. Please go to our website, redwoodinspiredlivingcenter.org and click on the home page. There you will find a link to PayPal and also a link to Zelle with clear instructions on how to give your donation through those sites using a credit card or bank account. And you will also find the address of our center. So you can send a check directly by US mail. We pick up the mail frequently. And don't hesitate to call Jan if you need support. Her number is 925-813-5500. Please take time to read our prosperity updates in the weekly connection every third and fourth Wednesday of the month. There you will find last month's income and expenses. A special thank you to those of you who set up a monthly donation during our Give to Grow campaign. We thank you again for remembering your love offerings for our weekly small groups and our Sunday workshops. And now we affirm, we accept our good and our greater good. And let's say that together. We accept our good and our greater good. And so it is. And so it is. Thank you so much, Pat. Can you believe that it's been six months since we've been together in this room. It's just crazy. But I am so glad that we are still meeting online, all of our weekly groups, our workshops. Um, and here we are meeting on Sunday. So thank you for, for joining us. Um, we are going to have a community Zoom meeting this Friday at 3.30 to kind of go over our income uh, statement from last month. And actually, I might have the one from, from um, the most recent one as well. So please join us there. I'm going to put the link on our Brentwood Inspired Living Connection page today. It'll have the prosperity um, note and then it'll have the Zoom link for Friday at 3.30. So join us there so we can chat and just kind of go over um, our, our, our budget, our, our prosperity update. So I look forward to seeing you there on Friday. And I am going to hand the screen back over to our wonderful John for our second song, our last song. Thank you, Amy. This is a little tune from James Taylor. It reminds us that no matter what comes to keep our hearts open. You can play the game. You can act out your part. But you know that's not the best you can do. You can spend all your life mending a broken heart Or let the gift of giving heal you Cause when you give your love to another It doesn't take any sacrifice Oh, 
Allahu father and mother, sister and brother. If it feels nice, don't think twice. Just shower the people you love with love. Show them the way that you feel. Things are gonna work out fine if you only will. Do what I say and shower the people you love with love. Show them the way you feel. Things are gonna be much better if you only will. You can run, but you cannot hide. This is why you know. Tell me what you're gonna do with your foolish pride if you're all by yourself alone. But once you open your heart and show the way you feel, you can feel it beginning to ease. I think it's true what they say about this squeaky wheel Always getting the grease Better to shower the people you love with love Show them the way you feel I know things are gonna work out fine if you only will What I'd like to do with you Shower the people you love with love. Show them the way you feel. Things are gonna be much better if you only will. Shower the people you love with love. Show them the way you feel. Shower the people you love with love. Show them the way you feel. They say you never lie. A little rain must fall. Let it rain, let it rain, let it rain. Open your heart to love, love, love. Let it rain. Let it rain, let it rain, let it rain. Shower the people you love with love. Show them the way that you feel. Shower the people you love with love. Show them the way you feel. Thank you so much, John. I love that. Thank you. Shower the people, all the people. Let it rain. Thank you. Thank you for Thank being you. here. And for those who want to find you, um, how can you're on Facebook, right? Can, and are you yes, I am on Facebook. And uh, there's a group I'm playing called the 360s too that uh, that you can find us through, or just come to the park in Walnut Creek, Larky Park, on Fridays at 11 o'clock, and nice. we're out there playing music uh, for anyone who likes to come and gather. That is wonderful. I've seen a couple of uh, live. Somebody's gone live here and there on Facebook, and I've seen you guys. I was wondering if you were still doing that. Thank you for that. It's beautiful. Yes. So find yeah. John, amazing, amazing musician. So thank you. So so much both of you pat and john i love you i appreciate you we all love you appreciate you all the comments coming in for the reading and the songs so thank you for bringing the joy we appreciate you and love you and i will see you on the other side a privilege to be with you all thank you grateful so very grateful 
Okay, everybody, I am thrilled to be sharing the inspirational message with you today. And uh, so here I am alone. It's, it's different for me to be the only one, you know, here. Well, I know John's logging out here, but <laughs> soon it will be just me on the screen with you, which is, um, which is really big on my screen because typically I'm sharing it. So uh, I'm so grateful. I'm just so grateful to be here and uh, Usually I'd read a bio right now, a little odd to read my own bio, so I'll just tell you a little bit about me quickly. Um, I am joyfully the spiritual director here at Brentwood Inspired Living Center. I am blessed beyond measure to serve here. And I also work at our fabulous local 110 magazines where we share um, great community connection and inspiration in, in that publication, and, and that's such a joy for me um, as well. I am a mother of four precious souls, uh, my, most important, uh, my most important qualification. And I have participated in so many different missions involving education and mentorship and different various workshops um, involving visioning and financial empowerment, meditation. I'm also a certified life coach and I have a real deep love for working with people. And I do wake up every day and make it my daily mission to energize and expand love in the universe. So that is me. And um, so as many of you know, we have our speakers turn in their talk title to myself and Kathy, ultimately Kathy, because she posted on Facebook and in our newsletter um, each week, um, weeks, weeks in advance. So weeks ago, I sent my, my talk title, Raw, Real, Radiant. I think that's what it is. <laughs> Or maybe it's in a different order, but we're all real radiant. And with all the shifting and sorting we've done over these last several months, I had jostled speaking dates around with different speakers. And then I realized just last week that the date this Sunday today is August 30th, which happens to be my grandmother's birthday. She would have been 89 today. So it seemed fitting that I might mention her um, today in my, my talk. So, um, so I'm going to share with you what I learned from my grandma on a train to Manhattan when I was 10 years old. So let me just check the feed here. I'm, I've got a lot of hats I'm wearing, right? So I'm going to check in here and just make sure you guys are there and you can see me and hear me. I'm broadcasting. Give me some hearts and, and comments if you can. Um, let me know that you're that I'm, I'm, I'm getting to you through the wave, the technology wave. So I'll, I'll keep my eye on the phone. So, uh, so um, yeah, so let's pray in, let's pray in. Take a deep inward breath with me. I invite you to, to inhale, just take that inhale of, of love and gratitude as we value this holy breath. This is a holy breath within us. And then as you exhale, just exhale all that no longer serves your highest and best, our highest and best as a, as a society, as a community. We are so grateful and so thankful for this moment as we create sacred space. This is a sacred space that we gather in. We gather together as one, consciously choosing to remember that our true identity is perfect, holy, whole, complete, I invoke divine guidance and I ask for an activation of awareness and divine wisdom right here, right now. We seek the kingdom right where it is, which is in our loving hearts within us. In grace and gratitude, we share the benefits of our love with all because we are one. And so it is. Amen. Ashe. Namaste. Thank you for being with me today. Thank you for being here, joining me. Let me just check in. Yay, okay, loud and clear. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> Thanks, Paris. Oh, I appreciate you all so much. Okay, here we are together in love. I learned a great lesson on an Amtrak train traveling from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania to Manhattan, New York. Well, I think specifically it was to Penn Station. During the summer, I was 10 years old. When I say lesson, I don't, necessarily mean like some grueling event that I had to painfully drudge through. Though in life, sometimes it can feel that way at times, right? I know we've all had those moments. But what I mean is an incredible miracle message that I was ready to see, hear, feel, and then grow into understanding better as I evolved as a spiritual and physical being. 
I mean, there's only so much you can grasp at 10 years old, right? <laughs> so for me, it was like seeds that were planted and then germinated. And then I grew into this knowing and understanding myself and others in a deeper way because of that experience. So this particular summer, my grandmother had taken me and my sister to Pennsylvania to visit um, some family members, my aunt, my uncle, my cousins. And um, it was a rough, it was about um, a two hour train ride, I'm, I think maybe an hour and a half from where we were um, into, into um, New York. And there were six of us girls on this train and I'm the oldest of them all, so I was 10. It was my sister and my four cousins. And to pass the time, we sang songs during that train ride. We played hat clapping games. I mean, friends, this is what we did before iPhones, right? We sang 99 bottles of beer on the wall and alphabet game. And so we came to a song where we began inserting various names. And I guess we ran out of names. Um, and in a split second, we decided to insert grandma into the song. And this was the song. I see London, I see France, I see grandma's underpants. They're not yellow, they're not pink, but oh my goodness, they, oh my goodness, they sure stink. That was a song. And I had no idea what that moment in time would bring me. Awareness, sensitivity, inability to ever laugh at any jokes that were ever at any person's expense. My grandma was only sitting about one seat diagonal behind us a diagonal and I looked over at her and she was sobbing. My grandma, I, I, what was she then, 54 years old, sobbing because of what we thought was a silly, maybe even funny song. I, mo I, I, mo I went in the aisle and I moved over to her, sat next to her and I attempted to put my arm around her shoulders and she recoiled. She recoiled away from me. My grandma, she was a hugger, a lover. She embraced everyone, everyone, especially me, especially me. I called my grandma Graham and she was more than special to me. When my parents moved to California, she was there to greet us. When my mom went back to work, she watched me every day. Until she retired, she was a Pacific Belt telephone operator. And the odds should have been pretty slim that I would ever get her on the line when I dialed zero for operator. But a few times I did dial zero from my home phone. For those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, there was a time when we picked up our landline, the only kind we had in our home and we could dial zero and a real life operator came on the line. Sometimes we'd ask the time to set an analog clock or get assistance with a long distance phone call. But most often I'd call the operator uh, if someone's line had been busy for too long. It's the busy signal, do you remember that? And I would ask them to interrupt the call and let them know that there was an urgent call trying to, to come in. Now, when you're an adolescent and you're choosing your outfit for the next day of school, uh, that might be considered an urgent matter. So a few times I'd say, I want to get Graham on the other end of the line when I dialed zero. And a few times I actually did. And she'd answer, operator, how can I direct your call? Or something like that. And I'd say, Graham, it's Amy. And we laughed about those coincidences, you know, coincidences for years. Um, divine appointments, I call them. We had a bond that never ceased. And in that moment, on that Amtrak, my gram shut off to me. I was devastated that I hurt her so deeply. I would be absolutely determined to figure this out. So to explain what I figured out, I need to take you back in time. So there's a woman named Claire and she was what they called a stewardess on the ships which transported people and goods from Europe to New York Harbor. And she met a man who promised her the world but when she became pregnant, he didn't deliver any promises. Claire, the stewardess, gave birth to Ovina. They called her Rini, who was basically raised on the ships, traveling between Europe, and eventually became a stewardess on the ships as well. Ovina was born out of wedlock. And even when I was first told these stories of my great-great-grandmother Claire and my great-grandmother Ovina, I could feel the tarry, heavy, 
texture in the word wedlock. The word held judgment, condemnation, maybe shame. Later when I read the book, uh, The Scarlet Letter, does anyone remember that book? I imagine, I imagine that in 1903, it might not have been terribly different for Claire as an unwed mother. So I remember feeling into this story. So Claire and Ovina were from Denmark and one day my great grandmother Ovina stepped off the ship in New York and did not return to Europe. She was a waitress waiting tables for the rest of her life. She was my mom's gram and my mom talked about her like a celebrity. She loved jewelry. She was my mom's favorite person. She was young when she married and she had two children and my gram was the oldest. Hard times set in, husband who had been um, in World War II and returned. When he returned, he you know, drank himself into disappearance. And I wondered later that if he was one of those soldiers that returned uh, with PTSD, which was not addressed, uh, acknowledged, or really even known about back then. So my gram and her brother were put into an orphanage for a good portion of their childhood because their mother just couldn't financially support them at that time. So my grandmother left school at age 17 to get a job as a telephone operator because she had only one dress to wear and she was so embarrassed to wear that same dress every day. She was tired of the sneers and the giggles and the humiliation of being called out for what she lacked, a variety of clothes. Then years later, as a single mom of three young children, after she left her marriage with only the clothes on her back, she had to cross the picket line. The Pacific Bell telephone operators were picketing for a pay raise, rightly so, but she could not afford to stand with them in the picket line because if you were in the picket line, you didn't get paid. And she had to earn the paycheck as she had three young children. So she crossed the picket line. And as she did, they called her names and threw things at her and she'd arrive to her switchboard and there would be smashed tomatoes and one time even feces smeared on her chair. And she told me how she sobbed to be so rejected and, and felt so unworthy. And I imagine that the past emotions were activated in her from her younger years. So that same loop of emotions of, you know, lack, unworthiness, maybe shame. We are shaped and molded by the events circumstances, and words oppressed upon our lives. The human body holds the record of all that we've lived, including encounters of love and connection, and of course, moments of pain, anguish, and loss. It's all in this record here, <laughs> this body of ours. I once read that 95% of who we are by the time we are 35 years old is based on habits, emotional reactions, and unconscious behaviors. When we are activated by an emotion, there's a loop we experience neurologically. And I know, I know this particular community for sure is well aware of this. We've talked about it a lot. We've covered this a lot. And while I feel it's so important to understand in a spiritual community is because yes, we are spiritual beings, and we have this human experience as well. And I think it's important for us to understand how that works. We've all had wounds, traumas. Sometimes we don't even realize why we react in the way that we do. Maybe it was just a flippant comment from a parent or a caretaker while we were a, you know, a young child or an experience that we made up a story about. Whatever it was, it may be getting activated in us over and over. Years ago, I heard Tony Robbins say, you can't just keep chanting, there are no weeds, there are no weeds, while you're standing in a garden you know, full of weeds. Sometimes you have to reach down and pull out the weeds. And this is about creating heart-mind congruency. So if we speak, so we, do, we speak words all the time, we're speaking words, and the congruency comes when our words and the emotion are a match. And that's why if we're, we're chanting, there are no weeds, there are no weeds, but the emotion says there are weeds, it's not a match, it's not an alignment. So the emotion is a knowing and the knowing is a vibrational frequency that we hold. And when the thought and the knowing align, they match up, then we experience the resonance of that. 
So in the spiritual world, the chanting, there are no weeds over and over while your ankles might be strangled by weeds, um, might look like the pray it away theory or spiritual bypass where you're sidestepping or avoiding unresolved emotional issues or psychological wounds or whatever it might be. So I consider myself a pretty spiritual person. I'm a committed meditator. I'm an avid prayer. I live by the rule that my life, my every thought is a prayer in itself. I'm a chat with God here, there, everywhere kind of gal. I call in spirit guides and angels. I find sound healing to be beneficial. I work with hands-on healing, vibration, and frequency. And I understand that sometimes we have to reach down and pull out the weeds. <laughs> so this might be called shadow work. This might be called dark night of the soul. I think Eckhart Tolle says something like, uh, make friends with the deep wound. He phrases it something like that. And I actually really like that because to me, this is having the utmost compassion with ourselves and with others, but it begins here with ourselves. And that's so important. So I know that my truth and your truth is pure essence. We are born the divine nature of God, of source energy, which is abundantly, infinitely available. We have a physical body, which is a vessel that that truth, our soul, God's source moves in, through, and as. This physical body is the conduit for the energy. Energy is vibration. What is going on within us reflects outside of us, you know, as above, so below, microcosm, macrocosm connection. So I've spoken before using the radio frequency analogy. If we want to hear the station 103.7, we can't be tuned into 94.1. We want to tune to the frequency of our core knowing. Our core knowing is God expressing infinite possibilities, divine intelligence. So we can ask, what frequency are we emitted, emitting out? So it comes down to our belief systems which come from conditioning and programming. So many people never stop to think about what was planted in the garden of their mind. So think of it like this. When you're born, you're given a plot of land. As a child, you don't, under you don't really understand your garden. You have caretakers and, and people who are raising you as well as culture, religion. I mean, so many pieces of input that took care of your garden for you in the beginning. They planted seeds they thought would benefit you. The experience they have around their garden what they shared with your garden. Most people grow up and never question their garden. They never ask if they actually wanted a rose garden or a succulent garden or a vegetable garden. <laughs> the garden, of course, is your mind and the plants are your beliefs. So many people stay with their garden never questioning, just knowing that it's comfortable. Everyone they know has this garden. This is why we see family groups and social groups kicking around, beating the drum of the same old stories because it's familiar, it's comfortable. Most of the time, nobody questions. Maybe it's about religion or political preference or money stories. You know, it could be kicking around the, the story that money is evil or hard to attain or money is unlimited. And, uh, or maybe the seeds in your garden said that relationships are difficult and, and scary or that relationships are loving and supportive. I don't know what was planted in your garden, but the universal principle says that thoughts have creative power to determine events and attract experiences. And it's all about the words we use, the emotion behind them. And this is all about the energy in your garden. Just checking real quick, sorry to break here. I saw messages coming. Okay, just making sure everyone can hear me. <laughs> sorry, so I really like the way Joe Dispenza describes this. Um, he says that we what we think determines what we believe and what we believe determines how we feel. How we feel influences how we act. And I like to really just, just think about that on a, for a minute. We think about 60 to 70 thoughts per day and 90% of them are the same thoughts as the day before. The same thoughts lead to the same choices. The same choices lead to the same behavior. Same behavior leads to the same experiences. Same experiences produce same emotions. 
So those emotions drive the same thoughts. So the nerve cells continue in the same loop. So all of this neurobiology, neurochemistry determine how we think, act, and feel. And how we think, act, and feel is called our personality, which then creates our personal reality, our perceptions, our experiences. So if I want to create a new personal reality, a new way of doing my life or certain aspects of my life, then I must become aware of my unconscious thoughts and behaviors and look at the emotions I live by every day and decide if these emotions belong in my future. If we wanna create a new life, new experiences, new personal reality, we have to change that personality. So creating the same actions and experiences that stamp these same uh, networks of neurons, um, hardwires, what Joe Dispenza is, hardwired the brain into unconscious programs of behaviors, automatic habits, just our redundant um, attitudes, just things that come as a reaction. So going back to pulling out the weeds, this, that's why the po- just the one positive thought won't work on its own is because if the body's already on an unconscious program of the past, like a computer program, throwing out a positive thought doesn't necessarily make it to the body unless we integrate. We have to integrate, embody the thought or affirmation to influence the body, the energy. So the moment we become aware of our unconscious thoughts, this begins to shift just from awareness alone then it takes only a little willingness. Of Course in Miracles talks about this. Only a little willingness is needed to begin the energetic shift. One thought with the emotion can give us a surge of that experience. I mean, just think about that. If you think about a happy moment, your body feels happy. You, your body actually thinks you're in that moment. If you think about a heartbreaking moment, if you really go into that moment, think about the person standing in front of you or the phone call or whatever it was, your whole body feels feels heartbroken. All you need is an image, a picture, a thought in your mind to put yourself in that place. One thought, even about something 30 years ago, has our neural loop activated and our body responds as if we are experiencing that again, right then and there. Like my gram sitting on the Amtrak. I can see how my gram crying alone, you know, perhaps not having the nurturing as a child, um, showed up there in the train. Maybe, you know, she was alone at school or in the orphanage. And so what I might walk my gram through now, if that happened, and these are ways that we can speak to ourselves if we find ourselves activated, if we find ourselves going through something. So I I would sit with my gram and I would ask her about the thought that she's experiencing and the memory that's coming up. And what age is the little girl? And and does she feel pain in her body? And if she does feel pain in her body, ask her where, because a lot of times we will hold um, that story. We will hold that energy in a certain spot in our body. So in order to dissipate it, we need to identify where that is. So I would ask her, where is the pain in your body? So I call any kind of upset in my body, my divine alarm clock. It alerts me to notice what's happening. It helps me catch myself if I'm entering a loop. So with with my grandma or with myself, I would not feel like I have to fix it. I would not resist it. I wouldn't try to help her stop crying. What I'd be aware of in this space, though, is that we've got we've had to go into the feeling and sometimes without even noticing, we might have this temptation to resist the pain and not feel it. We want to run from it. And, And the way we do that sometimes is we get mad, we project, we might blame. Uh, we might want to distract instead. So that can happen in a moment when we're feeling through pain. Yet, if we drop into our hearts and we embrace what's happening and we just allow, if we just allow the feelings, acknowledge what it is that's coming up, maybe name it, maybe it's shame, maybe it's guilt, maybe it's embarrassment, lack. Allow softening with compassion toward yourself and others. This is how we transmute energy. I have a deep practice about softening. Maybe we can do a workshop about that at some point if um, anyone's interested, but it really works balancing masculine and feminine energy, just really softening the body. I also love um, the Buddhist loving kindness meditation for this and also the blessing of the energy centers by Joe Dispenza. This is, these are great for moving and transmuting energy. Uh, so if you find yourself <clears throat> 
um, with something going on, especially in a certain part of your body. Those are great meditations. Um, so, so, and the reason why I didn't just start with the story about my grandma's dress at age 17 and just go with that, like that's what was activated in her. And I took you all the way back instead to her mom and her grandmother. And this is because I wanna illustrate another really important point. And it has to do with generational trauma and generational beliefs. And I don't have the time here to dig into all this thoroughly, but I, what I want you to know is that there are energetic cords and attachments and, and stories and all of this that run through generations. And you have the power to remember your wholeness and also bring that wholeness, the vibration to restore generational traumas, to restore back to original programming, which is divine. Our, our original programming, uh, re, so restore, re is always mean to take back to original programming. Um, and I like to say allowing wholeness and allowing wellness uh, for healing. Um, I believe our bodies can heal anything, but I sometimes feel a little bit of a difference between you know, seeking a healing uh, which, and allowing wellness, you know, seeking a healing feels sort of like we're coming from lack and we're looking for determined to find something. Whereas um, allowing is there's an ease of, of allowing what is already there, what is already true about us. So, uh, so what is great, what is so, so great about this news about one thought can give us the surge of the experience as if it's actually happening is that it goes in all directions, right? So we can go into a sad, heartbreaking moment and then, but we can also easily activate the loop with a memory that you feel so incredible about. So we can do this every morning, you know, we can go into some really great loop every morning and start our day that way. I'm gonna throw out gratitude here because there have been so many studies now done on people's brains while they're in gratitude and it is, an exceptional miracle what goes on in the brain when you enter into gratitude. So that's why um, gratitude is my number one go-to to shift out of anything, any um, upset, any when my a divine alarm clock is going off. So, so this is the raw part. The raw part is we all have stuff. We all have traumas. We all have stories. We all have belief systems. Many are calling BS these days. We all have this stuff. And the other part is that all this stuff can feel very, very real at times. But our pure consciousness is actually what is real. We get to identify the beliefs that are not serving us and choose to transmute energy. You're, it's amazing. It, you're a creator. You can emotionally recondition by aligning thoughts and feelings. And when the mind and body are working together, you find that resonance. You're headed for a new destiny. You change the pieces um, of your life that aren't working for you. I want to share a little aside about this. Sometimes this can happen really fast. When you align up, and you raise your vibration, things that are no longer in alignment fall away. And sometimes it can be in the most unforeseeable ways and really quickly. So don't get nervous when this happens. Lean in, lean into this. <clears throat> Excuse me. A lot of talking. <laughs> I usually have a break right now, right? <laughs> so Michael Allen shared something in his talk last week. Great talk. Go back and listen if you missed it. And he said, <clears throat> no longer is it appropriate to forget that in every moment of your life, there is a life force coming into your breath, breathing into your body, igniting everything within it. When Michael said that, I caught this message. Months ago, many people were talking, including myself, talking about a new paradigm, shift in consciousness for those who choose. This is about moving into a new timeline, a new consciousness, essentially, for those that choose. So in this, this new place, this new energy, processing isn't going to have to take all this long, drawn-out time and agony if you so choose to step in. And always when we step into this, this is where our radiance comes in. Beloved souls, this is where our radiance comes in. 
When we are in our God essence, when we are enjoying, breathing, basking in the pure, beautiful space of the divine, knowing, knowing our glor glorious perfection, that we are glorious, standing in our sacredness, you are sacred, full of light, knowing that the frequency I am emitting is calling in the love, drawing in the power and the presence, and then our whole body radiates. I've heard people talk about a North Star, about knowing your North Star, setting your mind to the North Star, and then the North Star becomes the priority. All decisions, all actions point that direction toward the North Star. And I use a phrase a lot, many of you have heard me use it, holding the high watch. And I think of it in this way. <clears throat> I think of it in this way that people talk about their North Star, actually. I think of it, what it means to me is being, being God essence, standing in the sacredness, every bit of me divine, my body, each cell, every breath, my creative ideas, the inspiration, I love the word inspiration, breath of the spirit, breathe in the spirit, all of this that moves through me as me, it's all to be love to be love. A few, work, a few weeks ago, I was listening to Michael Beckwith, one of his messages, and he said, you are an elegant royal being. You're shot from eternity. You're shot from eternity. Walk like it, talk like it, act like it, shine like it. I said, yes, yes. So if my North Star, your North Star is being love in the world, love in action, a compassionate being. How do you talk? How do you walk? How do you speak? How do you act? How do you think? How do you breathe? How do you breathe? If I declare in that this is my North Star, I am a child of God, expressing God in, through, and as me, that I am a sacred idea showing up, and you are a sacred idea showing up. If that's the case, then I tune into my original programming. I align up, I get the resonance because I'm tuned to the frequency of my original programming. My original program is infinite possibilities. My authentic truth is divine intelligence. And divine intelligence, and I'm not talking about book smarts, I'm talking about divine essence, joy-filled, radiance, so if that's my original programming, and that's my North Star, my North Star is to hold the high watch, be love in the world. How might that look? Living my radiance, holding the high watch, showing up as God expressing. How does that look? Will I get caught up in fear and division from what I watch on television or on the news or from what I hear in gossip circles? Will I fall in line with the us and them rhetoric? Will I put my precious energy, my life force into forming arguments and feeding my confirmation bias? Will I allow media, society, my family, whomever to dictate how I feel about others or situations? Will I allow my decisions to be made based on unconscious belief systems that say they're real, but I know it's actually real. Will I shine my radiance and allow events, circumstances, memories, and people to dim my light? Which one? Can't do both. Can't shine your radiance and allow yourself to dim, which? Or will I meditate on the glory of God, that I'm a perfect idea manifesting this power and presence? I am that. You are that. Wake up every morning and tell yourself that. If I see a Biden bumper sticker, I might say, wow, that must feel really good to have such strong support for a candidate. That must feel like such a high vibration in my body. And when you go into that, you feel that vibration. You tune into that vibration. If I see a home that has a, a Trump uh, sign in the yard, I can say, wow, 
In a predominantly democratic area, that sure takes courage to display a Republican sign. Good for them. I want to be courageous like that and tune into that vibration. In this physical form, this vessel, I get to express God. In your physical form, in your vessel, you get to express God. I get to design my destiny, my day, each minute. I don't have to live on repeat. I am a creator. You are a creator. I create a new. I don't have to beat the drum of the old stuff. I get to choose daily, each moment, many times a day if I choose to show up as a divine being and remember that truth. I don't have to participate in what anyone else is telling me to fear or be angry about or be stressed about. How exciting is that? Like That is exciting. That is exciting that we get to choose and we get to make these choices. We are a divine creator making these choices in our life. So I think, I think to move, I feel like moving energy. And so what I'm going to do is stand up and I'd like you to stand. If you're sitting, I'd like you, if you are willing and able to stand up with me and let's, um, let's move through some, some wonderful affirmations, but more than affirmations, truths. Let's move through some wonderful truths. I'm going to stand up. I don't know if you're going to be able to see me. Can you see me in the screen? Uh, my screen is, I'm looking on my phone now to see. Okay, so I want you to just repeat with me. I, can you see me now? I am connected. <laughs> now I can see on my phone. Okay, I am connected and aligned, holding the frequency with the infinite field. Think about that, say that. I am connected and aligned holding the frequency with the infinite field. I am a spiritually sacred being. I am a spiritually sacred being. I'm inspired. I'm inspired breathing in the spirit. All my needs are met. All things work together for my good. All things work together for my good. The universe is trans inspiring for me, for me. I am a mighty blessing to the world. I am open to divine wisdom. My body is healthy and protects me from germs and viruses. I am at one with the divine mind. I am at one with the divine mind. You can do this every morning. Stand up, be it. Remind yourself of these truths. Remind yourself of the glory that you are. Be grateful for the spirit that moves through you. Tell yourself every day I'm a radiant conduit of light and I am God expressing. And I'm just getting started. Some of you guys uh, heard my, my talk with Jerry. I am just getting started. I'm God expressing. I'm just getting started. Why I think sometimes it's important to stand up or move or just move from the space you're in is because that really gets energy moving. It really helps um, the mind and body congruency. It really does. So if you ever feel kind of in a funk or, or stuck or, or what have you, stand up, move around, dance, yell in the mirror these wonderful affirmations to yourself. So let's just take a breath together. If you would, just take a breath. Inhale, hold it, release. You are divine light. My grandma was a divine light. She didn't always have the easiest circumstances to navigate throughout her life. She was also the reason I developed another awareness or she was the first person I, I discovered this with, which is to feel energy with my hands. And I was living on the East Coast in 2003 when my grandma was there for um, a family member's wedding. And I was touching her back and I detected something. I felt something. So when she flew back to California within weeks, she was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer and it had moved to her bones, to her back. 
So in that short period of time, I flew back to California for a last visit with her. Um, she was leaving the earth quickly and I was rubbing her feet and talking about her life, having a conversation about her life. And I was asking her about things she loved about her life and herself. And she said that the things she loved about herself was that she was always a hugger. That's what she said she loved about herself. Through all of what she went through, she was always shining her radiance as a hugger. And that translated to me that she loved that she loved. She loved that she loved. And she taught me that no matter what we experience, the truth is that we can be raw in our humanity, real about what is our authentic God truth and radiant because we are created from the most high. We are created from the most high. We are divine beings. You are a divine being. Take a breath with me. And release. Thank you for sharing with me today. I love sharing with all of you beloved bright beings. Okay, so <laughs> this is now I'm putting on the other hat, the, the hat, and ending the talk hat. Oh, let's just breathe. I just need one more breath. Release. We can always be a conduit for God. And we align up, it comes very easy. We stay in the flow. Okay, so let me check the feed. Let me check in on everybody and all of um, comments here. Good morning, everybody. Wow, hello, hello. So many, so many friends here. The feed was moving <laughs> while I was talking and I was wondering, okay, John, I choose to move into this new consciousness. Thank you, Amy, for the seed you plant in our gardens. Thank you, John, for the seed you plant. I appreciate all of you being here. I'm reading through all the comments right now, video and audio buffering. Uh-oh, I wonder. Could everyone hear me okay? I hope, <laughs> I hope we're still here. Garrett says, thank you for all the wise words, inspiring insights, very positive message in a rather negative time. You're very welcome, Garrett. Thank you for being here, I appreciate you. Um, Kathy said that she was having that problem too. Um, that couldn't have been more clear or compelling. Oh, thank you, Dawn, you know, you never know. <laughs> you never know, but when I saw it was August 30th, it was Graham's birthday, I thought we gotta talk about Graham today. So thank you, Jenny. I appreciate you. Thank you, David. I appreciate you. Uh, thank you, Christy. I appreciate all of you being here. Oh, the train in the tunnel analogy was helpful, inspiring. Okay, so um, let me just repeat that one in case um, people weren't logged on yet. At the very beginning, this was before, um, this is before we were even really starting. I was talking about, um, I heard an analogy once about the train going through the tunnel. And when, when the train is in the dark tunnel, we don't, we don't throw out our ticket and jump off. We just sit tight and trust the engineer to get us through to the other side. So that was the, the train in the tunnel. Thank you, Christy. Oh, thank you, Ronnie. I appreciate you being here. Love you all. Good, I'm glad there were no problems for, yeah, I think sometimes we never know. It's just, um, does anybody have any questions, any comments? So we will, we will meet at 1130 on our connection call. That Zoom link is on our homepage. It's right there, um, right? It's a Zoom, a big Zoom, and then the link is there. So if you wanna jump on there at 1130 uh, with us, we will be there. Ron is um, going to have a candle lighting for us. So bring a candle. That'll be very special. Uh, Paris said, I heard you great. Um, your grandmother's experience deeply resonate with me. It's so comforting to me to know how deeply you get it. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Um, you know, I get it. And that's the important thing, you guys, you know, is to walk your talk. It's, it's quite something to just have, you know, information and knowledge in your mind. We can, we can take all this in, retain all of this, but to really live it, to embody what we're talking about here, that, that's quite another thing. And so... I get it, <laughs> I get it. Gail says, Amy, your talk helped me make a needed shift in my thoughts. Thank you, you're very welcome, Gail. I am so glad you're here. I am really so grateful. Gail is in Tennessee and moved away 
a little while back. So I am I'm so glad we are able to connect this way. <clears throat> Excuse me, I keep clearing my throat today. Sorry about that. Um, Kathy says, what a wonderful talk. Your story about grandma brought up a lot of feelings. I know, I plugged through that one. You guys know that. If you were sitting here in the room with me, I would have been bawling, you guys know. <laughs> I so appreciate your loving and loving perspective. It helps me so much. I love you too. Thank you. I'm glad. That's it. I just want to be a conduit for God. I want to be God expressing. And that is my declaration every single day. How can I serve love every single day? Uh, Ron says, let us do a group radiance meditation at some point to raise our vibrations. Yes. I think that's a great idea. Um, there's a softening meditation. Did I mention that? I think I might've mentioned that softening meditation. I do too. That's really very powerful. Uh, Luinda says, Amy, you're the epitome of goodness and love. Thank you, Luinda. I appreciate you all. Listen, it is my joy. It is my joy to serve this community. My honor, my joy. I'm blessed. Yes, let's raise our vibrations together. Yes, stand up. I don't know. I was having trouble seeing my whole self on the screen, so I don't know if I cut myself off when I did that, but stand up. Sometimes we just really have to move the body to just jar us kind of into place, you know, dance sing, jog, whatever you need to do, stand up and, and get the energy moving. Good morning, Maria. Thank you. I'm so glad you're here. I love you all. Thank you for being here. We are so blessed to have such a beautiful community and so many new people joining us all the time. I'm so grateful. I mean, this is it. This is the joy. This is the joy, the love. It's just so exciting. Okay. So if your mind and spirit feel nourished by our community, please consider uh, giving, um, visiting our giving back. No, it's not giving back page. It's our ways to give page. Our giving back page is our um, interfaith ministry from Father Tom that we're giving to this month. So we have lots of great stuff on our website. That's Brent, brentwoodilc.org. Uh, we greatly appreciate all of you. Uh, next week, we have beautiful Verona Garland with us. She will be having a workshop too. So that will happen after the talk. And we look forward to having her back with us. We love her so much. Um, okay, so I'm going to close this with our prayer of transformation. And then I will see you over on the Zoom uh, connection call at 1130. Remember that link is right on our homepage. So go to brentwoodilc.org and it's right there on the homepage. Click right in. Join us. Let's talk. We'll talk more. We'll chat more. Um, Nancy says, I do the stand-up exercise and end up laughing at myself. That's good though. Yes, I do too. I'm... I'm, the, I'm really actually pretty ridiculous and silly at home, my kids will tell you. But it's just, it's so good to, to keep energy flowing and moving. So yay, do that more. I <laughs> keep doing that. Um, I was going to share about a Friday meeting. Okay, yes, I, I did in the beginning, but I will again, that thank you for the reminder, Pat. We will have a Friday Zoom chat. Friday at 3.30, I will put the Zoom link in our Brentwood Inspired Living Connection Group. We're going to just get an update on our prosperity um, um, update that we sent out last week. And we might have some new numbers, but we just want to chat. We just want to let everybody know where we're at and, and get ideas and talk. So please join us. Please be there. I would really like to see you there. Um, would I be willing to lead us in the Buddhist meditation during the connection? Sure. That's a loving kindness. That's a loving kindness meditation. It's one of my favorites. So um, yeah, we can do that. That would be great. Okay, everybody, prayer of transformation. Feel this with me. This is a good one to stand up to as well. The light of God surrounds us. I am light. The love of God enfolds us. I am love. The power of God directs us. I am power. The presence of God watches over us. I am presence. Wherever we are, God is and always shall be. And we are divine. You are divine beings, beloved. I love you. I love you. I will see you at 1130 on the connection. If I don't see you at 1130 on the connection today, I will see you 330 on the Zoom connection on Friday. If I don't see you there, which I hope I do, I will see you Sunday back here. It's a date. We'll have Verona. I love you all. Have a blessed day.